This is New Wave Jazz. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Uh, it's your boy, Dre Brothers, and we are back again. This is New Wave Jazz, and uh, we have a special, special, special guest. Uh, man, a, a leading lady in the uh, the low notes. Uh, I consider her a queen of it, you know, um, a low brass specialist, Miss Jennifer Warden. How are you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be talking to anybody these days. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, thanks. Well, at least we got a uh, Zoom and stuff like that, so we can stay connected. So, you know, that's that's always good. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, you know, let our listeners know who you are. You know, if they're not, you know, if they're not familiar with your work or who you are, let us know, and the New Wave Jazz listeners know, you know, who you are. Sure. Um, well, I'm a bass trombone player, which if you don't, if you're not familiar with trombone in, um, in general, it's, uh, you know, it's the lower uh, family member of the trombone family. So uh, I play pretty low. And uh, they use it a lot in classical music and in big band. And that's pretty much what I did for a long time. Uh, I got into doing Broadway, which brought me to New York. And uh, played in so many big bands and it was really my happy place. So I decided to form a band that would uh, really highlight the trombone and get composers to write new music for trombones specifically. And uh, it's it's like a mini big band. It's four trombones with rhythm section. That's it. Sounds good. It sounds amazing. Uh, if you haven't heard, we're here to talk about uh, Jennifer Warden's Bonegasm in their album, Not a Novelty. Uh, and that album from my ears it just sounds amazing um if you don't mind what why the trombone what you know what kind of led you to to you know <laughs> go full force with the trombone it's actually uh funny i wanted to play saxophone but my sister uh she got mad at me she said i was copying her so my second choice was trombone <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i had braces you know i didn't know what i was doing and um and I think I, I didn't, I wasn't at school the day that they did auditions for chairs, like for positions in the band. So I got handed a bass trombone uh, really early on, probably about seventh grade. And kind of, it kind of stuck with me. Even I, there was a period where I didn't play at all. And then I started up again um, a little more than halfway through high school. And I really just gravitated towards the low notes. They're my favorite. <laughs> Okay. Um, speaking of, you know, you bring those low notes out in this album. Uh, I can really in all your music. Um, as a matter of fact, let's talk about the the intro song, uh, uh, "Bonegasm." What you know? What what came? You know, what was the inspiration behind that? Bonegasmo. <laughs> yeah, Bonegasmo. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I I love Latin music. I'm from California, and you know, half the population is Spanish speaking. And uh, there's a lot of Latin music out there, and just it's something you hear. It's it's even though you know I'm I'm a white chick from the San Francisco East Bay, but you, it's everywhere. So it's it's really hard to escape. Um, and I love it. So I always try to incorporate at least one Latin tune on every album. And I talk to there's a lot of composers I know here in New York that I've worked with and that do that style really well and our pianist happens to be one of them he he's actually one of the writers uh, slash arrangers for this band called orchestra akokan and they were nominated for a grammy recently and he's he's pretty awesome his name is mike ekra so um i asked him if he'd be willing to write something for the band and this was his uh his what you know his contribution and Initially, there were some things that that I asked him to change because I just I wanted to, it to feel like it was home for me. You know, a lot of these tunes, I, I really want to fall in love with them at first as a listener. Um, you know, take the band leader part out of it. I want to fall in love with it as a listener. So he worked with me a little bit on some stuff that I was hoping to just sort of uh, change slightly, not not take away from his you know ultimate vision, but uh, it, it was nice to get to collaborate with him and have him interpret my sort of uh, 
<laughs> crazy. I, I don't know how to speak to composers because I'm not a great composer myself. So I'd be like, well, I just, you know, I wish this part was more uh, or something, right. you know, and, and uh, he translated that. So, but as you can see, sorry, my dog is talking. Um, <laughs> as you can see, uh, you know, he, he did a lot of composers. I asked them to not really, they don't have to feature the bass trombone, but just sort of amplify its position in, in general. So you can see, I start off playing with the bass and a lot of big bands. That's pretty common nowadays. Instead of playing with the section, I'm playing with the bass. So I get a lot more interesting parts than normally. And it's super fun. I mean, you could, you could hear it. We're all sort of like sitting in our chairs. Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I definitely got that same vibe of when I, of, you know, off of multiple listens, especially coming in, it brings you into the album very yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, you have no choice but to groove. So I, I yeah, definitely, <laughs> I definitely agree with you on, on that one. Um, let us, let our listeners know, you know, uh, what inspired this album, you know, uh, you came out with your debut in 2019 mm -hmm. and then, you know, COVID happened. So yeah. tell us about, you know, that time period between, you know, cre well, creating that music and, you know, in that time period. Uh, let us know about that. Sure. Well, I started the band, I think I might have said earlier, you know, commissioning people. And at first it wasn't much money, but I applied for a grant and I received it from the New York City Women's Fund, which is part of the New York Foundation of the Arts. And uh, it enabled me to really sort of step up my game in terms of commissions. And I got that right before COVID. And initially um, we were supposed to have our projects done by March, 2021. So I, I really tried to pretend as if COVID didn't happen. And I did that more for me mentally because I needed a project to work on or else I would have gone crazy. Um, and so I just was like, okay, well, we were going to record in June after this, this tour out in California. So, okay, we're going to record in the fall. And we just kept waiting for the, the regulations to sort of loosen up a bit, you know, in terms of testing and everything. And we did, we recorded in the fall. Only one of our um, folks had to record remotely, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, it presented its own problems that we don't usually have to deal with in terms of uh, creating an album. But the, the title, Not a Novelty, comes from just uh, the, what appears to be a novelty of four trombonists with a rhythm section, and also me as a female band leader that plays bass trombone. It seems kind of, you know, almost, almost a joke. <laughs> but <laughs> I, yeah. um, I, I actually pulled the title from a review that I got from the first album, and it was... Um, the gentleman, Dan Belowski, he's a jazz writer. Mm -hmm. And he said, from afar, the instrumentation might seem like a novelty, but the music argues successfully against it. And I think I was like, man, he totally gets it. So actually, so I named this album Not a Novelty and I had him write the liner notes. Oh, so wow. I was, okay. you know, it kind of came full circle. Um, but it really means a lot to me when people get what we're trying to do, because it does seem a little silly for trombones. You know, how often do people even even radio personalities like yourself mm. want to play that much trombone music you know yeah, right. um it's more sax piano vocalist uh, trumpet you know it, you don't gravitate towards trombone for the most part so mm. i wanted to give people something to chew on and really like like uh i i think i said this the other day i want to make them hate how much they love the trombone <laughs> <laughs> well you know i don't think it's even that i think <clears throat> The music, excuse me, the music speaks for itself. Um, I, I felt like I, I didn't even for a moment. I didn't even really I forgot that I was listening to the trombone just from the selections and the play style and how, you know, how predominant the, the trombone was. It was like, OK, I, I, I hear the music. So I think that's what a lot of a lot of people who are listening to this album and receiving this album is getting. So I think uh, you, you you hit it right on the nail, right on the head with, with the title and, you know, just with uh, what you what you gave to us. So, um, like I said, here at New Wave Jazz, we appreciate it. Um, that's I mean, that's one of the biggest compliments I can receive is that you forget it's trombones. Honestly, I that's that's I'm I am pleased. Thank yeah. you so much for saying that. Oh, no problem. I mean, that I mean, just from a listener standpoint, I totally put that to the side and was like, <laughs> OK, 
this is some great music here um um speaking of this great music let's let our listeners take a listen we talked earlier about the the intro track of bone gasmo <laughs> so <laughs> let our list let's let's let our listeners take a, a listen to bone gasmo the type the, the intro track to um jennifer warden's bone gasm not a novelty this is new wave jazz <laughs> Thank you. 
This is New Wave Jazz, and we are back. Uh, we just heard the amazing uh, uh, intro track to Not a Novelty, Bone Gasmo. Uh, Jennifer Warren, we have Jennifer Warren here with us. Um, let's talk about uh, just a few of the different genres that you touched on within within this uh, album. You know, you mentioned with this track we just heard was, you know, had a little Latin Latin vibe, but let's talk about all the genres that were involved in this in making this uh, album. Sure, it's it's funny um, to talk about it because initially when my husband is in the band John Fetchock, trombone player, composer, arranger, um, we were talking a, a lot about how to how to spin this album because he's like, well, this is this music is much more heady than the first album, and I think what he meant is is a uh, so, sort of a turn away from swing uh, in the traditional sense um, to more progressive modern. And that was probably because of the folks that I asked, you know, the people that I asked to write for the band. And I, I wasn't necessarily afraid of it because I feel like, ah, you put out one album, I don't really have a signature sound, you know, other than trombone. So I wasn't really afraid of it, but um, you know, it's something to consider uh especially for radio because i think most people really tend to want to hear swing it's something that's just it it, it pleases you when you hear it so the only truly swing tune on the on the uh record is blue salt but even that has like an afro-cuban uh section a couple sections in there so uh but we have two you would consider them a jazz waltz but neither one of them are super swingy um there's two tunes in in three on there which i love a good tune in three <laughs> um and uh there's also another latin tune by manuel valera another new york city based composer uh, of cuban descent and he's got um he arranged one of his originals for us, which was awesome. And then uh, we have uh, people like Remy LaBeouf and Carmen Stoff. They did stuff that is much more, um, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, it, it just progressive jazz or I, I don't know my genres past swing, <laughs> really. <laughs> it would be but it's, like it's that, straight yeah. eights. It's right. straight eights. Um, so people like uh, in terms of, it's not Latin. It's definitely not Latin, but it's not swing, but it's jazz. So, um, you know, there's a lot of um, places that people, I, th I think just the sounds that they're going to get are very familiar, but it's not in a, in a swing format. So I think people will be pleased. And in addition to, there are some 90s influences on there mm -hmm. that I, um, you know, as an angsty teenager in the 90s, I was in love with Tori Amos, who is a piano prodigy, singer songwriter. So I had my husband arrange her tune, which is basically just one chord. It was like a couple notes on the piano and her singing. And he arranged that. Uh, and I made him do it to feature himself because nobody slays a ballad like my husband, John Fetchuk. Um, and <laughs> then I had Darcy James Argue, who's super, you know, progressive big band writer. I had him to a cover of a sound garden tune. So it was like grunge trombones. And then Kurt Elling did this real, like super gnarly version of, of the vocals on it. And it's just, it was so much fun to create this album. I just hope that people listen to it because it was so wildly different than, than most of the music that I play, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and from the first album, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, I was, I was just about to get into that. I was gonna ask you, you know, make uh you know after making this album did you have what can you say have you had have you had the most fun making this one or working on your debut oh you know it's i will say i wouldn't say this one was as much fun as the debut because of covid there were so many things we had to do because of covid that were different and you know we couldn't rehearse at the time at the hmm. time we were everybody was afraid to be in, in in enclosed quarters. Uh, so we did like warm up gigs that were outdoors. We had two warm up gigs that were outdoors and then we recorded without missing one part, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't wow. say that this one was as much fun, but it's as dear to me. You know, sometimes the, the more difficult experiences that you have, you remember fondly because you survived. And, um, you know, not that this was, we were in any danger of not surviving, but it was 
something is a work we can be proud of, you know, mm -hmm. um, it means a lot, especially, I mean, it, it meant a lot to me to have that to work on, but then to get everybody together at a time when no one was working, be able to pay them and, and make music. It was huge. It was huge. Mm -hmm. I got teary. And even, even we just had a gig on, on Friday. It was the first time we played together in nine months, you know, wow. since the album. So wow. <laughs> it, it means so much. Um, and, and that's what I think I'll take, uh, away from this this album more so than the first okay yeah because this album i just i just feel like it was just very well received from just from everyone and just from everything i was reading and stuff and downbeat i was seeing them i'm like yo i gotta talk to miss warden and see what's going on and <laughs> i know that down the downbeat <laughs> thing said trombone <laughs> ecstasy i was like i can retire now yeah. i'm never gonna get better press than that <laughs> <laughs> right I, I i saw that i'm like man and then the album uh really you know was the de de defining of that and you can really hear that um you mentioned the song with kurt uh kurt ealing or elling 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 yeah and that's actually one of my favorite tracks from the album um so talk about go can you talk about this about this track a little a little bit more for us and tell us you know the inspiration behind it Sure. Um, so I have been uh, harassing Darcy James Argue for like a decade. I, I play in his band. Mm -hmm. So I've been harassing him for a decade, way before I even had a trombone quartet. I wanted him to write a trombone quartet. Mm -hmm. And this was when I was still thinking it would be without a rhythm section. So, um, but, you know, eventually I got a band and I kept harassing him. He never had time. He never had time. And then finally he had time. He said, you know, I don't have time to do an original, but I have time to do an arrangement. So we talked and, and, um, I really, I've always wanted to do like have a tune written on uh, Soundgarden's black hole sun, which is a much more popular tune from the album. I think it's called super unknown. And, um, Darcy said, you know, that one's been done a lot by jazz artists. So what if we choose another one? And I chose the day I tried to live. And originally it was just supposed to be me playing all the melody and taking the long solo that's in the weird mixed meters and um it came about i i was watching uh you know and spent a lot of time on social media in the pandemic <laughs> and uh, i saw i saw a video kurt did with charlie hunter you know the great million string guitar player right. and it was totally a way that i hadn't heard kurt sing before you know obviously he can do whatever he wants in terms of of uh, his craft he mm. he can do anything but it was a way i hadn't heard him sing before so i contacted him and i said would you like to ever sing with my band and he said totally which mm. uh, and i i know him from uh performing on the jazz cruise that's that's where i met him and he's just a real good human and a fantastic musician and you know uh, i didn't feel weird contacting him because i'm sure he would tell me no if he didn't want to do it but um he, he said, yeah, I totally would love to. I said, well, I threw out a couple different ideas. I wanted to, to be sort of like left of center in terms of what we did because I'd heard him do that stuff with Charlie. And, you know, I said, we could do this, we could do this, or I have this arrangement of a Soundgarden tune. And so I sent it to him. He listened to it and he said, let's do that. I said, would you want to be on the album? He said, totally. Mm -hmm. And, and that was the end. And he recorded from Chicago. Like we, we sent him the takes that we were using and we, we sent it to him. And then, um, I, he, he did his solo and I, um, did mine after he did his. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds like he's answering me, but I actually sort of crafted my solo a little bit, uh, in the beginning, just so it would seem a little bit more organic <laughs> rather than us recording in two different spots and trying to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I really, um, what he did was incredible. And, um, it's, it's one of my favorite experiences having worked with the vocalist on the first album I sang and I'm not a singer. <laughs> so, um, and it was a dirty song though. So I feel like I was, I was equipped to sing it, <laughs> but you know, having Kurt do, do his thing and just kill it. He just slays. It's amazing. Yeah, that's what I was like. Oh man, this, I had I replayed that one about two or three times after I heard it, and I was like, "Yo, this is a really strong song." Like, 
it made it to one of my playlists. Like I shared that with some of my friends back home. I'm like, yo, this this is where it's at. <laughs> so um, you know, it's great. Our drummer did that in one take. Oh man. Yeah, he's That's amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and then you know just like you said when you know just during that COVID time and uh you could tell that artists you know especially like yourself were using that time you know wisely and putting in you know putting in finding those grooves and finding different ways you know to stand out in such a unpre an unprecedented time so um not a novelty is definitely up there for me I'm, i i i really enjoy this album and without you know new wave jazz uh fashion uh let's give our listeners a chance to listen to the day i tried to live uh featuring kurt elling on uh, jennifer warden's bonegasm not a novelty this is new wave jazz Yeah. 
This is New Wave Jazz, and we are back. Uh, of course, we have the amazing, uh, the the low note queen, the trombonist Gen- Jennifer Warren, and we're here talking about uh, Jennifer Warren's Bone Gasm album, not a novelty. Um, we just heard the day I tried to live, featuring Kurt Ellen. Um, amazing, amazing work there. Amazing sound. One of those. Uh, songs that you know we can replay over and over i know at least i can so uh, let's talk more about the music that's involved in this album another favorite track of mine jennifer i want to talk about is icefall mm-hmm. uh, talk about those grooves and talk about you know the inspiration behind that amazing track yeah so alan ferber is in my band he's amazing he's uh from california like me we're actually from very close area in, in california um he's a little bit closer to Oakland than I am, but, uh, we'd never met when we were both living in California. I met him in New York. Um, and I play in his big band and his, on the first album, there's a track that was actually the reason why I formed the band is one of the reasons I formed the band. Um, it was first time I ever wanted to improvise, um, on a tune. It's the first time I ever wanted to learn a tune. Usually it's, it's for bass drum bonus. It's kind of a, very stressful and we panic when people ask us to in general there are people that do it well but in general you know most people come up classically like me and then are like you know we're peeing our pants when someone asks us to play on a blues (laughs) but uh this was the first time I really wanted to to learn it and you know do the craft and it was super powerful for me so I made a band and made it my mission to get better at it and um yeah so he I Alan Ferber is, is someone that I go to a lot for composition because he's just, he's good. He knows what the trombone can do. He has interesting things to say as a composer. Um, and so I asked him for an original and he brought in an arrangement. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and at first I was like, no, I want an original. But then I was like, I'm still going to pay you for this arrangement because I love it. And usually when people offer that up, there's a reason for it. I found um, a couple times people have gone ahead and said, okay, well, I'll do the original you want, but then I end up liking their arrangement better. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, There's a reason, you know, yeah. they know, they know things Something, a little yeah. bit more than we do. So, um, uh, both of his tunes that he wrote, the arrangement is Icefall. And then, uh, he wrote an original called Union Blues. They're both on this album. Mm-hmm. And, um, y- you know, I just, he's someone I really respect, but also he has such a cool way of writing. It's, it's different than anybody else, you know? Um, and mm-hmm. Icefall is written by a, a saxophonist that's also plays in Alan's band. His name is Chris Cheek. And I think that album is from the nineties. So I think mm-hmm. it's a, uh, I forget what album it's on, but um, it's called, yeah, it's by Chris Cheek. If anyone wants to hear the original, um, but yeah, everybody gets a chance to blow, which is more traditionally, like if you get four trombones, you know, everyone expected it to be a, a trombone and everyone gets a chance to blow. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's such, it's such a cool song. It's very flowy. It's, it's one of those tunes in three on the album. I love a tune mm-hmm. in three. Um, but you can't have too many. I found out <laughs> all of a sudden, everybody was writing tunes in three and I was like, you gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I really appreciate Icefall. Um, that's a really great, like great, great vibes, great mood. You know, um, I I've heard it on the station here a couple of times. Um, we have that in heavy rotation out here because <laughs> that's oh, one of that's our great. favorites. <laughs> that's one of our favorites there. Uh, Icefall it just has like 
it has that good groove and that good melody that makes you you know want to move and just makes you feel good uh, yeah i call it uh, the carpal tunnel tune for the pianist because they're literally playing the same three notes for like 60 percent of the chance they're going da 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 carpal you know, tunnel tune <laughs> and you know those are the tunes that you know that i feel like i don't know they have like this special thing about them that kind of keeps people and bring and draws them in like the more simple the tune and you think oh man i think i need to create all this da, da, da. but when it's more simple and relaxed and it's like okay i can i can vibe out without doing you know without thinking too much or doing mm-hmm. too much so uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of tracks here uh, that exemplify that so um in new wave jazz uh, fashion let's check out icefall uh, this is new wave jazz <laughs> Thank you. 
This is New Wave Jazz. Of course, we are here with Jennifer Warden. Uh, we're discussing Jennifer Warden's Bonegasm album, Not a Novelty. We just heard Icefall, uh, one of New Wave Jazz's favorite, one of my personal favorites as well. I, I got a couple of favorites, so... Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> That's uh, what we like. Yeah. <laughs> we have a couple of favorites here on this album, so please be sure to check out uh, Not a Novelty. Uh, Jennifer, let's talk about, uh, you know, your band, Bonegasm. I know you kind of mentioned, you know, how, what kind of created and sparked you to create this uh, brainchild of yours. So, but uh, talk about, you know, uh, just all the, you know, all that entails of having your own band. What kind of positions, you know, has it put you in, you know, different positions or has it, what kind of tests have you, you know, come across, you know, and just for any other aspiring person that's out there. Uh, sure. Let us know, yeah, about that. I, uh, so I formed this band um, 2017, so four years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a rehearsal and then we had a gig. And um, immediately after that first gig, I was like, well, I want to do a record. And at the time, I was working a lot. I had a Broadway show and I was doing Radio City Christmas show on top of that. So I was I was working a lot and working myself to the bone. But, um, um, you know, in addition to all the big band stuff and, and the random recordings and, and whatever. So I was like, OK, fully self-funded. I did. I did everything, paid everybody, not what they were worth, but you know what I could. Yeah. And then I shopped it around to a label and someone, you know, bit Sunnyside was like, we, they, um, I'd been on a couple albums on Sunnyside and they were interested. So they said, okay, we'll put it out. And that was that. And basically when the second, I mean, when the first album came out, I started thinking about the second album and um, just, I'm always like, I have a list right here next to me. I'm, I'm thinking about the third album. I have a list of six tunes here that are possibilities for a third album. You oh, know, wow. I'm always kind of looking forward because you know, what's that saying? Uh, uh, a rolling stone gathers no moss or something, yeah. right? I don't want to get complacent <laughs> or comfortable in any way. Um, but, uh, some things that are interesting for me, having been, you know, a professional musician, not as a jazz soloist in any form for so long that people immediately think that I'm like um like some sort of jazz hot dog which I am not you know I'm not I have no interest in playing like with a small group I like what I do and that's pretty much all I want to do yeah. there's <laughs> so, nothing wrong with that <laughs> yeah and and I'm super honest about you know I I started learning how to improvise in 2017. You know, I've only been doing it for a couple of years and I'd like to think I'm getting better. I actually even went back to start my master's. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a year into my master's degree in, in jazz, trying to get better and make my band better. Um, and I, I'd like to think I am better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you sound amazing. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But I, I, I think that's been the hardest part for me is having to sort of accept where I am, mm -hmm. you know, as an artist and not compare myself to even the other guys in the band, not just like other bass trombonists doing it. There, there are people that are doing, you know, this really well, but obviously not with the trombone quartet. This, this thing is, is its own thing, but mm -hmm. um, you know, it's hard for me to not compare myself, but my husband has said some really just beautiful things to me about that he has said you know if what you play is beautiful then it's worth listening to and that's kind of what I really have held on to and what soothes those those sort of uh, bad voices in my head uh when I really get self-critical um and I think that that's a good policy for any kind of music if it's beautiful then you know it's worth listening to so i try to keep that in mind when when um i get hard on myself mm -hmm. or when i have to tell somebody look you don't you don't want me playing in a small group i'm you know i don't want to play mood indigo <laughs> <laughs> i get that yeah <laughs> you know um yeah, it's just not what i'm into so right. i tell I, I tell everybody exactly what i do and if they like it they like it if they don't then this band isn't for them and you know i can i can totally uh, except that the other thing that's come uh, up is that which has been really a drag it's just the name 
<laughs> the name sounds pretty suggestive, but if you're a trombone player, you can't you can't get out of middle school without hearing all the you know bone jokes. Um, yeah. You just you can't. <laughs> So it's something that I think we are used to and maybe the unassuming public is not. So right. when people hear the name of my band and say, well, I can't, I can't uh, invite you into my middle school. Or I can't invite you into my high school because it's a suggestive name. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's something that I knew what I was doing when I named this band, this right. it's kind of my way to shove it down people's throats, being female coming up in a male dominated field and just having to survive, you right. know, it was kind of, I did it on my humor. And, right. um, if people aren't into it, then I just have to accept, well, this isn't for them then. Yeah. And I mean, you know? that's just music and that's his music in general. Yeah. And mm -hmm. people, people just need to, I feel like people don't, um, look at it with their eyes fully open it's bigger than just oh that's just the name no what what what's going on with the name we have mm -hmm. the low notes rocking we have a great melody going you know so i i, I totally agree with you on that um but that's the best attitude you have right now is the best one so keep on <laughs> keep on pushing that and you know <laughs> thank you <laughs> um let our listeners know um where we can you know follow you on social media uh how can we you know stream it stream buy listen to your music let it let us know how we sure can um so i have a website jenniferwharton.com i have i'm on facebook as jennifer wharton we're also on facebook as bonegasm so if you just type in facebook.com slash bonegasm that'll go to our band page um, I have a newsletter slash just, a you know, event, uh, you know, I, I like to tell people when I'm playing places. So you can sign up for that on my website. I have, I sell merch. I love my merch. I'm actually wearing one right now. That yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Too, it That's says nice. bonegasm yeah. hardcore trombone, which, you know, how can you not buy a shirt that says hardcore trombone? I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> seriously i like that shirt i was gonna ask you yeah that. but uh yeah and i have all sorts of stuff because i i would from the time i can remember i would do anything for a shirt so the fact that i can slap my band's name on a shirt i have three of these <laughs> oh yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah um yeah. and you know there's beanies and hats and stuff and that's that's always fun um and uh yeah i'm on instagram jennifer wharton and uh, I am a little on Twitter, but not really. Baseball and Jen is, is my name there. And in terms of streaming, anywhere where you buy music or stream music, I should be there. Um, I sell my albums myself. So a lot of people have asked, especially during this time, you know, where can they buy the album where I get the most money? It's through my Shopify account. But if you want the best deal, I would go through Bandcamp. Um, Amazon also sells it. So if you want to give Jason, Jeff Bezos money, that you can give it to him <laughs> but you know I, I will say this and you, yarn radio you probably know all this already but when you stream albums if you really like it uh and you like the artist and not not just talking about me but if you like the artist buy that album right. because streaming pays at most a third of a cent per stream so if you listen to my entire album the record company gets two cents <laughs> Robert. and it's hard to, it's hard to split that up so yeah. either listen to it a million times or just you know <laughs> yeah. buy the album um yeah or, so, or yeah. do both or do both yeah <laughs> i i have had friends buy the album and then listen to it they feel like that that uh they can listen to it free and clear now because they bought the album i was like <laughs> oh that's really sweet but you know it, it's just a good rule of thumb for any sort of I'm a small time artist in terms of, of music overall, jazz is a very small portion of the pie. So um, we're all small time artists if you really look at it. So if you like an artist's music, please go out and buy it. It's the best way to support. And, and if you already own it, then buy their merch, but you know, so find right. some way to support, go out to see them live, do, do all that. That's the best thing for people to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jennifer, Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you being here, um, being a, a special guest here at New Wave Jazz. On behalf of um, WSSB, a South Carolina jazz station, uh, we just want to say thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for the amazing music, uh, your, the low notes, highlighting the low, the low notes. I really appreciate it. We appreciate it. 
Uh, so without further ado, this is New Wave Jazz. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll see you again. We'll see you. We'll see you around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.